Um, this is a brief introduction to motors. The way uh, Lab 10 is going to work is I'm going to talk about Lab 10 this week. You're going to do Lab 10 next week, right? We're doing Lab 9 this week. And so I'm going to talk about uh, a DC motors. I'm going to pass this box around. Uh, try not to short the two wires together because this is a, uh, this is a two um, a 2.2 amp hour battery. And what happens when you short it together? You get about 10 amps all at once and the whole box will catch fire, okay? And unless somebody brought sand, I have no way to put this thing out. Don't short the wires together and try to, it's for fun, okay? But you may turn it on and watch it spin. Now, it won't hurt you too bad because it's got tape on here. But this is your Lab 10 motor. Uh, it's a DC motor, okay? We're going to talk about how to make that thing spin at a constant speed. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, at least an introduction to brushless DC motors. These are the ones in your electric cars. Obviously, this is too small to drive your Tesla. Although Teslas use AC induction motors, but nevertheless, it was too too small to drive your Camry. Um, we're going to talk about servos uh, just briefly, and then uh, we'll have a whole lecture on stepper motors uh, next week. But I'm going to pass this around, and we're going to have to come get it because I tie it down. Uh, go ahead and turn it on if you want. Um, it is going to go flap, 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 flap. I'm just wondering. Don't short the wires together. Okay, you heard that memo because I don't have a bucket of sand. Yeah, lithium fires don't go out with water or CO2. They just burn themselves out of lithium. So be careful with your lithium batteries. Okay. Um, if you want to know more about motors that don't have anything to do with, uh, you know, with, with 319K and 445L or 445M, in other words, if you want to know how they really make electric cars, uh, Tesla has a nice website that talks about how they use their uh, AC induction motors. Um, a, lot of the other, um, a lot of the other electric car manufacturers use um, brushless DC motors, and we will talk about them. All right, uh, here's some 325. Um, uh, we're gonna do a couple of things to convert electricity into force. That's the essence of a motor. It turns out we can also convert force into electricity. That's a generator. Uh, most of these things work backwards. Um, yeah, so if you just spun that DC motor, you're actually generating power. Uh, back in it. But the essence of a, um, of a motor is we're going to see a bunch of coils, you know, little circular wires. And again, I'll take, break one apart when we get to the stepper motor to show you how these coils work. But if you pass current through a coil, it's going to induce a magnetic field in that direction. Okay. It gets real complicated in terms of all the different windings and how it's separated out. But suffice it to say, uh, we're basically going to drive a voltage through a short Okay. And boom, it's uh, luckily for us, the wire is very, very, very long. And so it looks like a wire from one end to the other, but it's going to be 30 ohms. We're going to, oh, at least it didn't, you know, start a fire. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, uh, if we try to model the behavior of this coil, uh, there are three components, and all of them matter. Uh, the first is the, the resistance. So if I gave you a wire and I said, what's its resistance, what would be the formula? Here's a wire. Okay, it's not zero. It's something 30 ohms, which means it's what? 30 ohm wire. It's either what? Okay, what's the formula? And you'll see that one minute. It's copper, right? So the copperness of the wire is what parameter? The resistivity, the resistivity of copper. Now there's two more. It's a, it's a set, essentially a cylinder. Yeah, yeah, the, the length over area. Okay, so if in order for you to get a 30 ohm wire, what can you tell me about L and R, L and A? Well, it's both. No, 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 no. It's, it's a, he said, is what and what? What number is very large and what number is very small? L is very long and A is very short. So it's a thin wire, but very, very long. Yeah, it's one of those things you, you can take it apart, but you can't put it back together because it's a very long wire. 
Okay. All right. The next is the next parameter is inductance. Now, um, these be, the nature of this coil is that it's nature of this device is it's this is an electromagnet. It's circled around a, an iron core, and it's got inductance. Okay. And you remember the formula for inductance, which will matter. It could be on the test. It could be on the job interview. What's the, what's the relationship between the current and voltage? Del di dt. And the problem with uh, that equation is we're going to switch this on and off with the digital circuit. And di dt is going to be huge, which means V is going to be huge. And well, the, the consequences of this is we're going to have to make sure we, we add snubber diodes. And else you'll see them in the, in the circuit. One more consequence. Okay. Uh, I'm going to simplify the numbers for the, for, the, for the protection of the professor. OK. If I put a uh, 5 volts across a 20, um, a 25 ohm motor, okay, it's 7 volts and it's 30 ohms, but close enough. Okay. Uh, I would expect the current to be 5 over 25 or 200 milliamps. But what happens is when I actually measure it, okay, when I actually measure it, I am going to get an amp. And I go, well, how did that happen? Okay. V equals 1 amp times uh, 25 ohms. There, now we got it. Okay. How did 25 volts develop across this motor, this resistor? Okay. Turns out, you've got to remember, this is a motor. Okay. So what can you tell me about motors from a black box standpoint? What happens when I put, what do I put into a motor and what do I get out, by the way? Uh, what, 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 uh, what units? What unit? If I don't put in volts, by the way, I put in power. Okay, I put in watts. I get electrical watts. And what do I get out? Watts, mechanical power. Okay? So it's an electrical to mechanical converter. Now, you might call it volts and amps on this side and call it torque and newtons on the other side. But it's still watts to watts, power to power. It's a converter from electrical. But it's also a converter in this direction. It converts mechanical power into electrical power. And the consequence of friction okay, is it's going to stick me a minus 20 volt supply right there due to the fact that your lab partner's got his fingers on that piece of tape. Applying force back into the thing, and that's how I get an amp out of this thing. Okay? And so remember that there are three components to your, to your DC motor coil, or to really any, oil, any coil. Okay? There's the resistive, which is due to the rho <coughs> L over <coughs> A. That's L length. And then there's an inductance, but there's also EMF. Okay. This is the essence of how a generator works. You spin, put power in, you get power out. Okay. But this thing is a function of friction. Okay. So the bottom lines are going to get a lot more current than you possibly imagine okay, that you could think of. That's the bottom line. Here. Right. Uh, pretty pretty uh, video to show you how this thing works. OK, pretty video. OK, that's the wrong one. I want this one. All right. All right. Uh, this is a brush DC motor. So inside of the inside of the winding, let's look at the components. The first we have a magnetic field. Uh, in this simple direction, in this simple model, you see it's going from left to right, from north to south. We've got a magnetic field. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is drive current through this black rectangle. 
Okay? So this black rectangle is inside the magnetic field. And the focus is on the part of the rectangle which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And because I'm driving a constant current, this is a DC current, through a magnetic field, there's a force. And the force on the up on the right and down on the left. But the trick is, how do I get it to swap? Because it's rotating, and that's what the brushes do. If you look right here, these two black dots are brushes, which are touching the, the um, receptacles of that brush right here, uh, causing the current in this coil to flip, depending upon whether it's uh, you know, at, off to the right or off to the left, or off to the left, off to the right. So it's flipping the direction of that current through that coil such that it always forces up on the, when the uh, coil is on the right and always forces down on the left. The essence of a DC motor is it's very, very simple, but it's got a point of friction. There's actually copper braided brush which has to touch. That's why this motor is so loud. Okay? You can hear the brushes scraping along the sides and eventually will wear out. Okay? Will eventually wear out. But they're cheap. Okay? Again, the force is going to be up here or down on this one and up on that side. And the brushes, and these are called commutators, uh, are the receptacles of the brush which allows it to flip current. Now the, the current goes always this way. So it's a DC motor. Uh, it's got a weird thing. If you stop it just right, it's a short, by the way. If you hold on to it just right, you could get the brushes to line up and short out. Be careful. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, don't grab onto it too light, because you might just cause a fire. All right. But how are we going to interface it uh, is we're going to use, this is just like uh, the speaker interface we did in the, in, the, in the alarm clock lab, except now we got more current. In order to get more current, we're, this guy here is going to go up to 3 amps. We're going to use a better transistor. And if you think about, uh, oh yeah, and then the way we're going to adjust the power is to keep a constant duty cycle and very, a constant period. The period will be constant and we'll adjust the duty cycle which is H over H plus L. All right. So in order to get more current, we need more gain. So if you remember the uh, tip one, uh, the, the PN 2222 had a gain of, of 100, and it uh, gave us a current of almost an amp, and oh, almost 100 milliamps. And now we're going to have a gain of 1,000. And it's basically, this Darlington is a, basically two transistors on top of each other. Okay. Essentially, the essence of a Darlington is multiple transistors, and each one has current gain, and boom, the whole thing has a lot of current gain. Uh, we will choose a, a transistor which can match. I said if you grab onto it, you could get an amp. So this thing can su supply three amps until it explodes. Uh, and we're going to do the exact same formula that we did for the 2222, is we took the coil current that I wanted, uh, divided by the current gain, and saw I needed a milliamp base current. And you go, John, is that frightening? No, remember our, our microcontrollers can you know, drive up to 8 milliamps before they get sad. Um, and so that's not going to be scary. Uh, and then you calculate the resistor by looking at this voltage here. Say this voltage is 3 volts. Uh, let's say this um, VBE is 2.5 volts. And so I'll calculate the voltage drop across the resistor, divide it by the base current, and see I need about 500 ohms. And then you do the Valvano thing. Well, if 500 ohms will drive it into saturation, 100 ohms will drive it way into saturation. And so I'll have 5 milliamps of current flowing into this thing, uh, driving up to 1 amp of collector current. Okay? And remember that the, all, none of these things are linear, uh, but we'll measure them all. Okay? Get out your ohmmeter, get out your ammeter, and we'll measure all of this stuff. 
Um, we're going to drive it off 5 volts. Stay away from the 7 volt stuff. Um, now, if you pull 5 volts, if you pull an amp out of your USB, it'll shut off. So my advice is don't grab onto that motor while you're plugged into the USB. Uh, that particular battery can drive, as you saw, 2.2 amp hours. So it'll drive an amp for two hours until it goes out. But your USB will probably kick out if you drive more than half an amp. Uh, restart your, re, re power cycle your computer, it'll come back on. All right. Uh, we're going to drive PWM. There's PWM starter code. I like just to focus down on to three things uh, associated with PWM. The first is the clock. Okay. So we're going to turn on the PWM clock. We're going to select the rate in which this PWM clock is going to run. Okay. Right here. Uh, right in this, these bits will set the rate of the PWM clock. So if you want to go really, really slow, you can divide it. But basically, we want to go really, really fast. Um, and then we have two parameters that matter. The load parameter will, will determine the period. That's the period of my PWM. And the compare value will set the duty cycle. Okay. So uh, basically, we're going to set this once. And we're going to adjust this in the next program here. We're going to uh, set the compare value every time I want to change power to the system. Uh, remember that what you are delivering to the motor, the input to the motor is power. And so we can look at the formula for power, which is right here. The voltage, which is pretty much constant, Okay, that's you know, 5 volts minus the VCE of the, of the TIP120. The current, which is highly variable and depends on load, on friction. But the software parameter we're controlling is duty cycle, right there. 